Refining has been added to the game in patch 3.12. It's the next stage of the mining gameplay loop. Now, you can take your ores to a refinery and turn them into tradable commodities, hopefully for a profit. So if you're looking for a way for your refining to make you more credits, this one's for you. Now bear in mind that refineries are only available at a small number of locations within Stanton and they're all space stations. These are mostly the L1s, Microtech, Hurston, Crusader and Arc Corp, as well as Hurston L2. Now as you approach these stations, it's pretty obvious that a refinery is present. There's this whole other infrastructure added to the station, log arms, silos and all these sort of booms and things. On the refinery deck itself, the first space is there, really there to kind of set the scene that this is a working area with loads of stuff to look at and sound effects and whatever. If you keep moving through that, there are two points of note. On the ground floor, on the right, is the mining shop. It's kind of your one-stop shop, really. It's got mining multi-tool attachments, armor, backpacks, mining modifications. There's even a rental terminal where you can currently rent the rock, the prospector and the cutlass black for periods of one day up to 30 days. Um, it's a nice addition and means that you don't have to deal with the major landing zones and shopping around to get everything you want and need. You can just arrive at the refineries and kind of use that as your home base for mining. Upstairs you'll find the kind of key refining area and there are two um, refining terminals and then two trading terminals where you can sell unrefined ores, although the buy price at these terminals does seem to be pretty low. These refining terminals are where everything is going to take place with your refining gameplay. They're your kind of be all and end all for refining. The basic idea is that you hand over your ore to be refined. Uh, this is going to take some time. It's going to cost you some credits and you will lose a, an amount of yields depending on the process that you choose. What you get out of it are tradable ores, just as if you'd bought them at like a mining station on one of the moons that you can then move around as physical components in the back of your ship to trade somewhere where it's a bit more profitable. And well, this kind of trading thing isn't without its risks. I do have a video covering the whole trading gameplay thing. Uh, the link is up on your screen right now, but don't worry, I will recap the major points a little later on in this video. Now, the basic idea is that you select the location where all your stuff is held, your ore, so your mining ship, your rock, whatever. Put them through a mining process by selecting which ores you want to refine, and then once the process is done, a couple of hours later, you just select where you want all those ores to drop off. But this is Star Citizen and it's never quite that simple. So this is the refining UI and we're gonna explain each part step by step, but first the basic process. Down in the bottom left, is where you select where the ore that you want to refine is held. That's pretty self-explanatory. Just select your ship or buggy and then hit set up work order. And you can select whichever ores you want to refine. Whichever ores you don't select, once you've started the work order, they will be wasted. So make sure that you select everything that you want to refine in case you lose it. It will warn you when you go forward that any ores that you haven't selected will be wasted. Um, it seems a little strange that they can't kind of sort them out, so it's not clear at this stage yet whether that's a bug or that's actually intended part of the gameplay. With your ores selected, you now need to look at which process you want to use. So here's a different load of ore that I've looked at across all five processes that you can use. Each process is a balance between the cost in credits to refine those materials, the time that it's going to take, and the yield. And by yield, I mean, well, if I give you a thousand of this ore, how many units am I getting back once the refining process is complete? It's worth bearing in mind that this particular payload is a partial load in a prospector. So when you see that 20 hour timer at the end, if you're bringing a mold in, for example, with a huge amount of ore, expect there to be potentially a lot more time before that process is complete for you. I don't think it's going to be a shock to anyone at this point that there is no clear winner with the processes. It's going to depend on an awful lot of factors, including the ships that you've got available to haul stuff, how much game time you have, and so on. But before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the rest of the HUD. Once you've selected your process and start your work order, you're going to see this. Here's the kind of SEU that is um, currently done, the progress bar and the time remaining. 
It doesn't look like there's any limits on the number of work orders you can stack, so they'll just stack up to the right and obviously move out the way when you want to start a new work order. And then you select the location that your cargo is going to be delivered to. Remember that it's going to be physicalized like any other cargo, so you'll need a location that has the capacity to take on everything that that work order is able to take. If you're even 0.1 of an SCU above, you won't be able to fit it in. So is refining worthwhile for you? Hmm, it's, it's tough. And it's tough because there are a whole bunch of variables. If you've got a ship that can cart a lot of cargo, it might work. Um, so let's look at the pros and cons. Basically, by refining, you can do multiple runs in a mining ship, get a load of work orders together. If you're clever, you can even get them to come up at roughly the same time by starting off ones that were quite slow. And as you go down, you get ones that are faster and faster, so they all finish roughly at the same time. You can load up a cargo ship, make one flight from those 10 prospector runs, make one flight to a major landing zone, land, sell it all. You save yourselves nine trips in quantum fuel, nine loads of hydrogen fuel, um, and all the time that that would take you by just doing those work orders. The downside is that, uh, as well as having to have a cargo ship that can do that for you in the first place, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. All it takes is one 30k error, which is the disconnect error. You'll lose everything in your ship, and that's the end of that story. One random explosion, one pirate attack, um, one quantum issue, one bug can lose you your ship and all 10 of those runs. So if you're finding that you're having a very stable experience, it might be worth it as long as you've you know, got the ship to be able to do it and so on and so forth. So I think for those reasons, it's really kind of hard to, to make one blanket statement about refining and whether or not it is worth it for you. What's clearly not worth it is just selling everything at the station. They seem to want to undercut you. It's still worth shopping around for the best place to sell. And I have to say it again, link in the description, SC Trade Tools, um, are great because you just tell it how much of a cargo you have and uh, what you want to sell and it will tell you the best place to sell. You can even filter it by location. So, well, I don't want to go any further than Hurston. You can tell it that and it will tell you the best place to sell it. It'll even tell you whether or not you need to wait because it'll only, it'll only buy certain amounts of cargo every so often. It will tell you that. So, check that out it's going to be absolutely invaluable for you on that same mining hut on the left hand side it says here that this is the capacity of the refinery and at the moment it says refinery is fine for capacity there will be no surcharge the hint that we can take from that is when refineries are getting full when lots of people are using them it's going to cost you even more to use those refineries so it's worth bearing that in mind also, if you're going to be doing so much, if you're a team using a mole um, and you've got caterpillars to cart stuff around, it's worth looking through these lists up here um, because it tells you what specialties this refinery has. So there will be certain minerals that it's much better at refining and you'll get an increase in yield and then some it's not so good at and you'll actually get a decrease in yield over and above what's normally applied to that process. It is surprisingly tough to make a video on a brand new feature um, when you kind of can't rely on anyone having any sort of knowledge about the system whatsoever. So let me know how that went. Did that help? Have you still got questions? If you have, please put them uh, in the comments below and I will do my best to get to you an answer. Um, I've got some time off now. Yeah, I was on night shifts before, so I got become completely rubbish at responding to people. Um, so let me know in the comments. I will get back to you uh, as quickly as I can. But that is a rough and ready guide on refining. It's my first pass. And obviously, as they update stuff, I will continue to add and update these guides. I'm sorry it's a few days late, but as we all know, Star Citizen have added some patches and they've cleared up some bugs that were stopping me giving you information. Um, mainly, two of the processes wouldn't tell you how long they took. So I couldn't do that straight up comparison without really obvious just random bugs sitting on the screen. But let me know what you think, uh, really keen to hear whether or not that helps your refining gameplay and whether or not it's something you think you're going to be kind of taking part in long term. You've been watching Drinkers With Gaming Problems, thank you very much for stopping by and I'll see you soon.